So hello, hi, and a very good morning to everyone. Welcome back to another class of PIB 247, where we are going to discuss uh, the PIB news from 22nd to 25th of February 2023. Okay. So yeah, without any delay, let's begin with the class and let's talk about the very first question, which is about the PLI scheme of pharmaceuticals. Now this scheme was launched guys in the year 2021, but the question is why it is in news. So let's read out the question. You will get to know that why this scheme is in news. So the first tranche of incentives under PLI scheme of pharmaceuticals amounting to rupees 166 crores to four selected applicants was recently released. So you need to identify the correct statement about PLI scheme of pharmaceuticals. So basically the first tranche under this PLI scheme, the first tranche of incentive under this PLI scheme has been released worth rupees 166 crores to four selected applicants and that is why it is in news and since it is in news we have to cover this scheme because you never know examiner has a question pooch late okay so let's uh, move ahead to the news so this is the news as i already told you and remember the scheme is being implemented by ministry of chemical and fertilizers you might get confused between ministry of chemical and fertilizers and ministry of health and family welfare with this word pharmaceuticals Right, but remember the correct ministry is the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers, which is headed by Mr. Mansur Mandavia. Okay, now let's talk about this scheme. Talking about this scheme, the objective, PLI scheme of pharmaceutical, the objective is to enhance India's manufacturing capabilities in the pharmaceutical sector. Right, in the pharmaceutical sector, the scheme intends to enhance India's manufacturing capabilities. Right. And as I already told you, it was launched in the year 2021 for a period of six years with a total outlay of rupees 15,000 crores. Okay. Remember the incentives under this scheme are given in three categories. There are three categories of products for which the incentives are given under the scheme. Number one is category one, which includes biopharmaceuticals, complex generic drugs, patented drugs, cell based or gene therapy drugs. Orphan drugs, special empty capsule, complex excipients. Now you don't have to remember all the names, right? Don't worry, don't get afraid. You don't have to remember these names. Not at all required for the exam. In category two, there are bulk drugs. And these are those bulk drugs which are not included in the PLI scheme for bulk drugs. Now please don't get confused. There are two PLI schemes, different PLI schemes. One is for pharmaceutical sectors as a whole. And second is only for the bulk drugs where there are 41 eligible products, right? So ex excluding these 41 bulk digital uh, bulk drugs, jo baki jate hai bulk drugs, these are under the category two and category three products includes those drugs which are not covered under category one and category two. Okay. Now remember under the scheme incentives on incremental sales to selected participants are given, right? Ranging from 10% to 3%. 10% से 3% तक का incremental sales के अंदर दिया जाता है by the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers. ठीक है जी? So that is all about this scheme and now let's come back to the question. We have to identify the correct statements. So it was launched by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. No, as I already told you, please don't get confused between the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and Chemical and Fertilizers. This is incorrect. It has a total outlay of rupees 30,000 crore. Is that so? It's 15,000 crore. Huh? It is being implemented for six years. Uh, yeah, this is correct. So I think this should be the correct answer to this question because we have to identify that one correct statement about this scheme. So option C is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number two. <clears throat> question number two is Eurasian Patent Organization and CSIR, which is Council of Scientific and Industrial Organize Research. Council of Scientific and Industrial Research recently have signed a non-disclosure agreement for cooperation on the traditional knowledge digital library. Now, what is this traditional knowledge digital library? We'll talk about it. Don't worry. Uh, traditional digital knowledge library access. So you have to identify the correct statement about this traditional knowledge digital library. Okay. So let's move ahead to the news and then we will come back to the question. So remember the news is that Eurasian Patent Organization and CSIR, they have signed an MOU, right? 
and this MOU will provide access to EAPO, which is Eurasian Patent Organization. Access of what? Access of traditional digital knowledge library, right? From now on, EAPO will have the access of traditional knowledge digital library database for purpose of search and examination related to Indian traditional knowledge or Indian traditional medicine system. Okay, ji. So that is why this MOU, this agreement has been signed to give access of traditional knowledge digital library to Eurasian Patent Organization. All right. Now talking about Eurasian Patent Organization. So remember, it is an international intergovernmental organization for under Eurasian Patent Convention. Right. It, it is headquartered in Moscow and these are the members of Eurasian Patent Organization. These are the members and yes, you should remember the name of members of Eurasian Patent Organization. Okay. Now talking about traditional digital no, knowledge digital library. So remember the uh, this traditional knowledge digital library was established in the year 2001 with an objective to prevent Erroneous grant of patent on Indian traditional knowledge and deter all the misappropriation of the country's traditional knowledge. So the entire information regarding India's traditional knowledge is there in this particular library, right? And the nodal agencies to maintain this library is Ministry of Ayush and CSIR. It is a collaboration between CSIR and Ministry of Ayush. Okay. Talking more about it, so remember, it is a first of its kind database in worldwide which keeps all the data regarding formulations and techniques of traditional Indian systems of medicine obtained from the traditional texts like Ayurvedic, Siddha, Yunani, everything. Every uh, Indian traditional medicine's information is there in this library. At present, the information is available in five languages which are English, German, French, Japanese and Spanish. And remember, access to this library is only available to those countries, to those nations which have signed an agreement with the government of India or with CSIR and Ministry of Ayush to have the access of this library. Okay. So that is all. And now let's identify the incorrect statement about TKDL. It was established in 2001. Correct. It is a joint collaboration between CSIR and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. No. It's not Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. It's Ministry of Ayush. So this is incorrect. It is a first of its kind database in worldwide containing information of formulations and techniques of traditional Indian system of medicine. Ye baat bilkul sahi hai. There is no problem. So this is correct. At present, a database information in digitized format is available in 10 international languages. No, not in 10 languages, but in five international languages, the database is present. So this is incorrect. Its database is available to all patent offices across the world. Is that so? No, it is available to only those patent offices which have signed an agreement to have the access of this library. So this is also incorrect. So the correct answer should be 2, 4 and 5 only option B because we have to identify the incorrect statement. Okay. And now let's talk about question number 3. So question number 3 is about the 22nd Law Commission of India. So it has, uh, the union cabinet has given an approval to extend the, uh, due to, uh, actually union cabinet has approved the extension of 22nd law commission of India. So you have to identify correct statement about the law commission of India. Okay. So the news is this only that the tenure of 22nd law commission of India has been extended till August, 2024 till August, 2024, the period the extension has been done and earlier it was about to end in this month only the February 2023. Remember the composition of this commission will remain the same. The chairperson will be justice retired Rituraj Avasti. It will have four full-time members including member secretary. It will have secretary of the department of legal affairs. It will have secretary of the legislative department as ex officio member and not more than five part-time members. You have to remember the full-time chairperson. You have to remember the full-time chairperson. Other composition, there is no need, but you have to remember the name of full-time chairperson, Justice Retired Rituraj Avasti. Okay? 
Now talking about Law Commission of India, so remember it is a non-constitutional and non-statutory body. There is no act to back this commission and it was not provided in the constitution also. It is constituted by central government through the Ministry of Law and Justice currently headed by Kiran Rijiju from time to time. It was for the very first time set up in the year 1955 and since then it is being constituted by different governments, by different central governments. And finally, remember, uh, whenever it is constituted, it has the defined terms of reference on the basis of which it gives it its recommendations. All right. So that is all about this. And now let's come back to the question. You have to identify the correct statement about LCI. It is a non-constitutional, but is a statutory body. It is non-constitutional as well as non-statutory body. It is constituted by Supreme Court from time to time. Here you can have a confusion, but remember it is constituted by central government through Ministry of Law and Justice, not Supreme Court. So this is incorrect. It was originally constituted in 1955 and has been reconstituted since then several times, correct? And it makes recommendations to government as per its terms of reference. So this is also correct. So correct identify karna hai. 3 and 4 should be the correct answer. Option D, 3 and 4 should be the correct answer. Now, please remember one thing. You need to focus on this word, whether you have to identify correct or incorrect statement. Because if you look at the options, because if you look at the option, there can be 1 and 2 only also. But in the examination, it will definitely happen that there will be 1 and 2 option also. So, correct identify 3 and 4. But incorrect 1 and 2. So, do answer mark. Right? And with this, let's move ahead to question number four. Union cabinet has approved the ratification of three protocols related to amendments in Chicago Convention of 1994. This convention is related to which of the following? Kisse related hai? Bas aapko itna batana hai. Remember, this is related to international civil aviation, right? International civil aviation, Chicago Convention of the year 1994. And remember, the ratification of these amendments. This will assure India's commitment to the principle enshrined in the convention. And this convention majorly talks about, you know, the international civil aviation security. Okay? It will also provide better chances and opportunity for India to become more instrumental in matters related to international civil aviation. Okay? Now talking about this convention. If we talk convention, ki baat kare, so as I told you, it majorly it is majorly concerned about international aviation security, but along with that, it also establishes rules of airspace, aircraft registration and safety, security, sustainability and details rights of the signatories in relation to air travel. It was established, it was signed in it, it's 19, it's not 19, 1944, it's 1944, Barba 1994, I don't know why. Because here it is written 1994. It's not 1994, it's 1944. Okay? It's 1944, guys. Right? Okay, so remember it was, it was signed in the year 19... One second. It was signed in the year 1944 in Chicago and it came into force in the year 1947. Right? And it has currently 193 signatory parties. 193 signatory parties has ke under. Okay, so that is all and yeah, this convention is related to international civil aviation and hence the correct answer to this question is option A. Question number 5. Where has the Ministry of Commerce and Industry <coughs> headed by Piyush Goel approved to establish an India Center for Lab Grown Diamond in Saint LGD with the estimated cost of Rs. 242.96 crore over a period of 5 years. Now, if you guys remember... We have discussed this in the Union Budget 23-24. The Government of India, the Ministry of Finance, the Minister of Finance in fact, announced this in her Union Budget speech that we will set up an India Center for Lab Grown Diamond in one of the IITs in India. Right? And this has now been approved. Okay? With a total cost of 242.96 crores for a, uh, the upcoming period of 5 years. Remember, it will be set up in IIT Madras. It will be set up at IIT Madras. And uh, the objective of this center 
will be to provide technical assistance to industries, entrepreneurs, manufacturers in the country to promote indigenous manufacturing of lab grown diamond. Right? Lab grown diamond ka manufacturing capability badhana will be the objective of this particular center. It will also get uh, you know research, it will also do research, this center will also do research and development in the lab grown diamond uh, with respect to how we can enhance the manufacturing capability of India in this region, in this sector, lab grown diamond. Okay? Talking more about it, so remember the lab grown diamonds have very vast application in various areas like defense, like jewelry, like thermal and medical industry. Globally, its market stands at $1 billion in the year 2020 and it is expected that it will rise to $5 billion by the year 2025 and $15 billion by the year 2035. Okay? And remember, in the financial year 22, India was one of the leading producers of lab-grown diamonds and India's share was 25.8%. However, we are dependent uh, majorly on the, the uh, on various countries on the globe for the raw materials which are required to make the lab grown diamonds and this problem will be solved by this center which has been established or which will be established uh, in IIT Madras. Okay? So that is all and now let's come back to the question. So it will be set up at IIT Madras, option D is the correct answer. Question number 6, pe jate, Jaipur declaration. Jaipur declaration has been adopted during 18th World Security Congress held in Jaipur, Rajasthan. It is related to what? So in the previous session, we have discussed about this 18th World Security Conference, which, which was organized by Railway Protection Force, RPF, in collaboration with International Union of Railways. Okay? So during uh, it, it concluded with the adoption of Jaipur declaration. Why Jaipur declaration? Because it took place in Jaipur. That's why the declaration is named as Jaipur Declaration. So, with the adoption of Jaipur Declaration, interna uh, this World Security Con Congress, which was organized by I RPF and International Union of Railways, it was concluded. Okay? Now, this Jaipur Declaration outlines what it outlines, what it contains. It contains actionable agenda for UIC. UIC is International Un uh, Union of Railways only. French may so that is why the short form is UIC. To explore innovative approaches that can help global railway organization to achieve their long-term goals in the area of railway security. Right? Railway security ke area mein jo jo goals hai usko achieve karne ke liye, what should be the actionable agenda that is contained in this Jaipur declaration which has been adopted by the participants. Right? So, therefore, the correct answer will be what? It is related to railway safety and security. Option C is the correct answer. Let's talk about question number 7 then. CSC Academy, uh, Common Service Center and National Institute of Electronics and IT have signed an, have signed an MOU to enhance digital literacy and skill development in India. These organizations are affiliated under which ministry? So, this is a very easy question, hai, but theek hai. Kabhi -kabhi asan question bhi aana when we are talking about National Institute of Electronics and IT, what should be the ministry? Ministry of Electronics and IT. Option C is the correct answer. Remember this MOU. The objective of this MOU is to establish a long-term partnership between these two organizations, CSC and NIELIT, to promote digital literacy and create employment opportunities in the country. And under it, CSC Academy and this NIE. Uh, LIT will work together to develop and implement training programs to promote digital literacy in the country and with the help of that to create employment opportunities in the nation. Okay? So I already told you the answer. It is Ministry of Electronics and IT. Option C is the correct answer. And guys, now let's move ahead to the questions in short, which do not need much explanation, but there are various questions today. 13 questions are there which will be discussed in uh, questions in short. But before that, if you want to have the PDF of this class, you can join this Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. Okay. Question numbers 8. Pe pe. 
which law enforcement agency has conducted golden dawn operation across India to curb gold smuggling? I believe you guys can easily answer this question. The gold smuggling to control gold smuggling, this golden dawn, dawn operation has been launched by Directorate of Revenue Intelligence. Option B is the correct answer. Question number nine. Where has the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment headed by Dr. Virendra Kumar in collaboration with an NGO, Change Inc. organized conclave to celebrate World Social Justice Day, which was observed on February 20th. Okay. So it was organized in New Delhi, capital of India. Option A is the correct answer. Question number 10. Which of the following ports have been identified and nominated by Ministry of Port Shipping and Waterways for developing them as hydrogen hubs? Very, very important question. Bahati supreme important question hai ye. Capable of handling storage and generation of green hydrogen by the year 2030 as envisaged under National Green Hydrogen Mission. National Hydrogen Mission, which we have discussed recently, right? So, these three ports, guys, are Paradeep Airport, Deendayal Airport and Vio Chidambaram Airport. So, 1, 3 and 5 is the correct answer to this question. Very, very important. Question number 11. Where has the Ministry of Science and Technology, headed by Dr. Jitendra Singh, organized first of its kind National Conference on Geospatial Policy for National Development? Very direct question. There is no need to go into the details of this conference. Just remember it was organized by Ministry of Science and Technology in New Delhi. Option E is the correct answer. Question number 12. Where will Indian Council of Agriculture Research ICAR be organizing National Horticulture Fair 2023 in collaboration with Society for Promotion of Horticulture under the theme Innovative Horticulture for Self-Reliance. So theme is given, organization is given, the name of event is given. You have to tell the place where it will be organized. So it will be organized at Bangalore. Option C is the correct answer. Now this question is something which is interesting. Which of the following is incorrect statement with respect to horticulture sector of India? Okay. So jitni bhi information is sari important hai. So that's why I have made a question. All the five statements are important. Right. So sari yaad rakhni aapko. Horticulture production has increased 13 times from 25 million tons. In 5051 to 331 million tons during 2021. Bilkul sahi baat hai ye. Horticulture production is more than the food grain production. Ye bhi sahi hai. And horticulture constitutes 40% of the net cultivated area. No. It constitutes of 18% of the net cultivated area. So this should be the correct answer. Horticulture contributes about 33% of the gross value to the agriculture GDP. Ye bhi theek hai. India is the world's second largest horticulture producer, accounting for around 12% of worldwide fruit and vegetable production. Ye bhi baat bilkul sahi hai. So all the statements are important, guys. Do remember it. You can use these lines, you can use, you can use these data in any of your answer, in any of your essay. Hai? So option C is the correct answer. 14. Union Cabinet recently has approved the signing of air service agreement between India and which of the which of the following countries? Kaun si country ke saath government of India ne ye agreement sign kiya hai air services agreement. The country in question is Guyana. Option E is the correct answer. Option E. Agriculture and Processed Food Export Development Authority APIDA is participating in 20th edition of Gulf Food 2023 which is the world's largest food conference or get together of food stakeholders. Which country is organizing Gulf Food 2023? The correct answer is UAE. Option A is organizing Gulf Food, the 28th edition of Gulf Food 2023. Okay. Question number 16. In 2021-22, India's total agri export was approximately $50 billion. What is India's rank and share in the global agri exports in 21-22? So India's rank was 8 and the share was 2.33% and that's why the correct answer to this question is what? Option B. Aage chalte hai. Satra pe aajau. India and UAE have signed the historic CEPA in February 2022. We all know this. But that is not the question. 
it aims at boosting the merchandise trade between the countries to how much over the next five years so it will increase it will enhance the merchandise trade between these two countries to 100 billion dollars over the next five years and that is why the correct answer is option d next question is question number 18 which environmental organization is organizing 22nd edition of its annual flagship event World Sustainable Development Summit in New Delhi with this theme. The theme is written here. You can make note of theme. So this organization is Worldwide Fund for Nature. Option C. Aage chalte hai. Which power sector PSU has been ranked number one independent power producers and energy traders globally in the S&P Global Community Insights Top 250 Global Energy Company Rankings of the year 2022. So, which power PSU is? Tell The correct answer is NTPC, National Thermal Power Corporation. And question number 20, the last question for today. Where will Ministry of Personnel, Public Grievances and Pension be organizing the first G20 Anti-Corruption Working Group meeting under India's G20 Presidency? So, it will be organized at Guru Gram in Haryana. Option B is the correct answer. Alright, so that is all for today. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next session. Goodbye, take care and God bless.